Hey there, church. It is so wonderful to see all of you. Welcome to our streaming worship. If you're visiting with us today, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Chris, and I am grateful to be gathered together in worship with you today. A bit of a note about how our worship is working during this time. We have resumed in-person worship in our sanctuary here at New Hope. And if you're in the area on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., we would love to see you. We absolutely invite you to join us for worship and to praise God together. If you can't get here on Sunday mornings, that 10.30 a.m. worship service will be live streamed. And then about an hour or so after that service is done, this service will be available for you to worship on demand anytime from wherever you are. All of our worship services and resources can be found on our website at newhopelc.org. And these services can also be streamed on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash newhopelc. Today, friends, if you're curious about New Hope and who we are, I want to invite you to check out our website, again, at newhopelc.org. And if you have any questions about what we're about, or if you have any prayer requests today, or, or if you just want to say hi, would you drop me a note? You can email me at pastor at newhopelc.org, or you can email our admin at info at newhopelc.org. You can also drop a comment on YouTube or even our Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash newhopelc. However you choose to interact today, we want to hear from you. We hope and we pray that you are well today. And I want you to know that we give thanks to God for you and that we are holding you in our prayers. These aren't easy times to be sure, but I want you to know that wherever you are on your journey today, you are welcome here. There is a place for you here. God walks with you here. Lastly, church, we want to invite you to share this worship service with your friends and family. Share it to your social media feeds. Send it out over email. Invite folks to worship with you today. The best place to get all of the latest and most up-to-date information on everything happening here at New Hope is through our Thursday afternoon e-blast newsletter. Our email newsletter has updates about worship, faith formation, ways for you to be involved in serving our community. Church, that is the best place to get all of the information all together in one place. If you're not already subscribed to and receiving our eblast and you would like to be, please send an email to info at newhopelc.org with the word eblast in the subject line and we will get you added to our distribution list. A reminder that the links, the links to our weekly eblast newsletter are also posted to our Facebook page again at facebook.com slash newhopelc. If you're looking for a faith community, today, faith community today, I am so thrilled that God has brought you here to New Hope. We believe that the good news of God in Christ Jesus is for all people regardless of their personal status, race, creed, sexuality, gender identity, or any other label or condition that we use to divide or separate people. We are a champion of doing God's work with our hands, particularly serving the underprivileged and the vulnerable in our community and beyond. We believe that each and every person is endowed with gifts from God, gifts that are to be used for the betterment of this world and the good of all humankind. And it is our sincere prayer that everyone we encounter will experience this life-changing love of God through us. Again, friends, if we can hold you in prayer today, would you let us know? Drop a comment on YouTube or Facebook or send me an email again to pastor at newhopelc.org. We love you. And we are so grateful to God for you. 
Church, if you would like to make a gift to our ministry or give your offering today, we want to encourage you and to thank you for your generosity. There are many ways that you can do this. You can mail in your gift. You can drop it by our church office if you're in the area. You can also very easily give online using any credit or debit card. The link for that is on the screen down below. It is also posted down in the video description. But church, however you choose to give, whether your time, your energy, or your resources, we just want to express our gratitude to you for your incredible generosity. And lastly, church, we want to encourage you to bring yourselves fully and to participate fully in worship today. Grab your Bible or open the Bible app on your phone and read through the lessons with us and follow along. We invite you to sing along with the hymns that will be up on your screen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. We invite you, friends, to truly worship. Light a candle. Sit on the floor. Whatever helps you to set this time and this space apart. Be present here. This is holy space. Take a deep breath. Receive the Holy Spirit. God is here. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, you to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may more perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sin is forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of the divine purpose, God gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruit of God's creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Be, but be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongue, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jewish people do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders and they do not eat anything from the market unless it been washed. And there are also many other traditions they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, 
fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Hello, here we are on the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. So here's Pentecost, bright red, and we count all the way over to 14. So here we are in green time in the church. And we're gonna talk about remembering God's love. The Bible tells us in the book of James, don't just listen to God's word, act on it as well. That way, when you look in a mirror, you will see exactly who you are, a good person who hears what God has to say and does what God has to say too. All right, quick, cover your eyes. Cover your eyes, don't peek, cover your eyes. And now I want you to think of what color shirt I am wearing. Okay, don't look, don't peek. Okay, next question. What color is my necklace? Don't peek, cover your eyes. Last question. Am I wearing glasses or am I not wearing glasses? Okay, ready? And move your hands. How'd you do? You know, sometimes we look at things and we quickly forget just what we saw. And in the book of James, is, he says it's like looking in a mirror and seeing how we look and then walking away from the mirror and quickly forgetting how we look. But God wants us to not just hear about God's love, but to do what God wants us to do. So we shouldn't just look and walk away and eh. We need to look and hear about God's love and then go and live into God's love. That can be hard. Sometimes we forget. But James wants us to remember always that God loves us Remember that God wants us to love each other and to remember that we are made in God's image. And that'll change everything. So let's do our best to remember. Let's pray. God, help us to remember about your love wherever we go. Amen. Please pray with me this morning, church. God of life, our emotions seem closer and more accessible to us maybe than ever before. Place especially our emotions of frustration, anger, and disunity. Remind us this morning that our words do matter. Speak words of life to us today and help us speak those words of love and life into our world. Amen. So I've been engaged in an epic struggle, an epic battle of wills with my toddler for about 10 months now. At first, when he started talking, the sounds were cute and everything you'd expect, dada, mama, all the usuals. But then, uh, I think this was around late fall last year, he learned a new word. Despite all of my best efforts to teach uh, positive constructions and helpful affirmations, yes, just wouldn't take. But no, <laughs> sure did. And the word no is pervasive. What do you want for lunch? Do you want this? No. Okay, do you, do you want this? No. Well, okay, what about toys? Do you want to play blocks? No. Okay, read books? No. Relentless. Eventually, we learned the word yes, 
And eventually, I learned to stop giving him so many choices. Words are kind of funny that way. And I think that we learn very early on about the power of words. See if you recall. I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say, right, bounces off of me and sticks to you. Try this one. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but, right, words will never hurt me. What a crock. I suppose that kind of self-assured confidence is helpful for us when we're in elementary school, but as we get older, I suspect that we start to see the massive cracks in the logic of these aphorisms. Because the truth is, church, words do have an impact. Words can and do hurt. Your words have the power to wound and tear down, and the power to build up. And so often these days, we seem to be exceptionally adept at the one and woefully deficient at the other. We've left the repetitive themes of feeding and nourishing in our Bread of Life series that we were in for the past six weeks or so, and we've launched back into the teachings of Jesus from the Gospel of Mark. And are hearing these teachings from the Gospel of Mark paired with readings from the book of James. We've left behind all the talk of unity and building up and being reconciled to one another that we heard in the book of Ephesians. And we'll hear a lot more pointed words from the author of James. But I think the underlying message is constant throughout here. God's interested in how you're using your faith to build up one another, to build up and strengthen the body of Christ, to serve and to love others. When you stop and think about it, it's kind of what we hear and what we teach over and over again, week in and week out. And it's a wonder that it seems to somehow not take. There was a video I saw recently of a young mother teaching her daughter about the importance of words. She had a plate and a tube of toothpaste. What's something mean that you've heard your friends say before, the mother asks her daughter. That their clothes are dirty, the daughter replies. The mother squirts some toothpaste from the tube out onto the plate. What else, the mother asks. That their hair's messed up. Another squirt of toothpaste. What else, keep them coming that their shoes are raggedy, they've got no friends, their house is a mess, their toys are broke, that they're ugly, that their backpack's worn out. All more squirts of toothpaste out onto the plate. Okay, the mom says, handing her daughter the plate and the tube of toothpaste. Put the toothpaste back in the tube. The daughter looks at the plate, looks at the toothpaste all over the plate, looks at the tube, back at the plate, back at the tube. I can't, Mama, she says. I can't get this toothpaste back in there. And you can't take those words back either, her mother says. Once they're out of your mouth, they're gone. You can't take those things back. So if they're hurtful, the damage is already done. So be careful what you say to people. Now give me a hug. A powerful message about being cautious about what we say. The author of James puts it this way, be quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to anger. We seem to get that so backwards these days, so often we're Quick to speak, slow to listen, quick to anger. Jesus says there's nothing outside of a person that, go, that by going in can defile, but it is what comes out of a person that defiles. Guard your words 
quick to listen, slow to speak. Both the author of James and Jesus are couching these teachings in terms of faithfulness. Jesus is countering the arguments of the religious leaders that the disciples eat with unwashed hands. The religious leaders were putting up barriers between people and God. Barriers between people and the practicing of their faith. The religious leaders were more interested in the purity and the adherence to these human constructed statutes and ordinances. Rules that were crafted by humans, not commanded by God and using them to separate people from their practice of faith, using them to separate people from God. And the author of James here is warning against a practice of faith that may say all the right things on Sunday morning, but turns around the other six and a half days of the week and speaks with anger and vitriol and sordidness and wickedness, saying one thing on Sunday morning and something quite the opposite the rest of the week. Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, Jesus says. Know anyone like that? Know anyone that you look at their behavior and what they say and what they think and, 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 and you think, there's no way that that same person that I sit next to in the pew on Sunday mornings is this person here. Know anyone? I'll go first. I do. I know someone like that. Spoiler alert, it's me. Right? I do that. Some weeks are better than others, but I'll be the first to confess to you, my siblings in Christ, that the number of times my words and actions throughout the week match up with what I hear from Jesus and what I preach about on Sunday mornings are far fewer than I like to admit. Words of anger. Discontent. Thinking the worst of people. Speaking ill of folks, often in hushed words where they can't hear. Being far less gracious to others than I myself am in need of. Which, of course, is why we need God's grace. Because, oh my, how we fall short, amen? Every week we fail to live up to the gospel ideals that we hear from Jesus on Sunday mornings. Every week it's like we forget how to be the people that God has called us to be. Every week we look in the mirror for an hour on Sunday mornings and then walk out those doors and forget how we look. And so every week we need reminding that the death and resurrection of Christ is God's final word of love and life spoken into our world, our world that continually seeks further division, further oppression, further anger, further death. Thank God that God always speaks words of healing. Your anger does not produce God's righteousness, the author of James writes. I love that line. It's an incredibly helpful reminder because there are a great many things that we can be angry about, right? Whether related to the pandemic that never seems to end, or stressors from going back to school, or the jerk that cut you off on the freeway. Anger is an easy emotion for us to tap into. It's, it's close and it's accessible, maybe more than we would like to admit. But your anger does not produce God's righteousness, dear child. Anger, anger is okay, even holy sometimes, but anger is not to be weaponized. Be cautious of how your anger manifests. Be aware of anger that seeks to escape from your lips. But what if instead we channel our anger and our frustration in a different way. Jesus and the author of James are critiquing what they call inauthentic religion. Jesus critiquing a ritual and purity system that constructs barriers between people and God. And the author of James critiquing a spirituality where the words and the actions 
don't match up. A spirituality that speaks harsh and angry words instead of embodying care and concern and, and love for the orphans and the widows, as the author of James puts it. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but instead deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless, the author says, worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled, religion that is true before God, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Pure and undefiled and true religion, friends, is one that is focused outside of oneself. Focused on the orphans and the widows, those to whom God's people are historically commanded to show deference. Throughout the Bible, God's people are commanded to show particular care and concern to orphans and widows and strangers, immigrants, orphans and widows that the author uses here are code words as they are throughout the Bible for the oppressed, the marginalized and vulnerable communities, regardless of what century we're talking about. Whether it's first century Palestine, 21st century Houston, Texas, 21st century Afghanistan, our mandate, our commandment is to live and act with particular care and concern for vulnerable populations. Whether we're talking about how we live together as best we can in the midst of a global pandemic, right? What, what rules and restrictions should be in place in order to keep the most vulnerable among us safe? Or we're talking about housing justice, food justice, economic justice, racial justice, LGBTQIA2 plus justice. Your commandment, church, is to live and act with deference with particular care and concern for the oppressed, the marginalized, and the vulnerable groups. This is authentic religion. This is worship, a belief system, a spirituality, a religion that is commanded by God and that is pleasing to God. What if instead of anger and hostility, what if we were vocal, act, actually vocal and outspoken about the matters of faith that Jesus and the author of James lift up? What if we were loudly vocal and outspoken about the orphans and the widows? Loud and outspoken about matters of injustice. Loud and outspoken about the oppressed, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. Not simply being hearers of the word, but actually putting our faith into action and practice. Become doers of the word. Advocates for the oppressed and the marginalized. Caretakers for those in need. Outposts of compassion for the immigrant and the refugee. Fortresses of comfort for the students and the faculty and the staff over at Armstrong and across all schools in our district. Mentors and reading buddies for those kids who just need someone to show up and care and love them. By living and doing and not just hearing the gospel, you become active agents of God's change in the world. Are you with me? Do you catch what I'm saying? Let's talk about things that matter. New Hope has an opportunity to make a difference. And church, we are doing our best to seize that opportunity. And I want nothing more than for you to join us on this journey, for you to join me on this journey. We are speaking words of life here. As we reemerge and resurrect from this pandemic, we're having important conversations about the kind of community of faith that we will be. And I want you to join in these conversations. Because words matter. Our words matter. And these words have the power to build up and bring forth life.
and now church together with the whole people of God and the entire communion of saints, let us join in confessing our faith, the faith into which we are baptized using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Church, separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray for the church that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. We pray for the whole of creation that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. We pray for all who are in need, support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. We pray for all those affected by the pandemic, the sick, the dying, the fearful, the unemployed, and the forgotten. We give thanks for the gift of science and the welcome hope of vaccines. We pray for all those who are working on our behalf. Comfort your world, O oh God. Especially today, we pray for those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. In the midst of anxiety, fear, grief, and pain, Help us to be mindful of opportunities for rejoicing. We give you thanks for the many blessings you have given to us, including those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart inspire us by their example and renew our faith trusting that we will be united with them in glory we lift our prayers to you O god trusting in your abiding grace gather what has been sown among us make us to be what we have received from you your body your very self for the life of the world amen and now together with the whole body of Christ and the entire communion of saints, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray in the language most familiar to you or closest to your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Church, as you share Christ's peace with one another, receive this benediction, the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.